I'm quite hopeful that I can use this uh, feature here. Um, so I'm Chmielko Maślak uh, from Wikimedia Foundation's uh, Trust and Safety team. And it is safety that I would like to talk to you about today, particularly uh, digital safety. Many things that I will mention here, I'm sure are already well known to you. Uh, However, I would like to present them from the trust and safety perspective and underline the importance of some aspects of digital safety. After years of work in the trust and safety team, I have seen hundreds of cases of harassment, threats of different kinds, some very drastic, and all of them are equally upsetting, but particularly painful are those cases of harassment, sometimes very nasty, that could have been easily avoided if the editors used the necessary precautions before. And this is something that I would like to talk about, about digital safety. Why should we care? Why is this important? Well, uh, in the physical spaces, we... Um, slideshow, yes. Thank you for, for telling me. Oh, all right. So uh, why is this important? Why should we care? Basically, in the physical spaces, um, we have this kind of automatic uh, safety assessment, right? Whether to get into a dark alley in the middle of the, of the night or something, right? But uh, in digital spaces, we often access them when we are in our comfort zones, which gives us a kind of false feeling of security. Also, I know that many editors have this kind of thinking. OK, I'm not doing anything wrong, right? I'm contributing to the free and high quality knowledge. Why should anyone be interested in doing harm to me? The problem is that there are many bad actors whose goal is contrary. So they can target specifically those uh, uh, editors in good standing because they stand in their way of taking over the projects, for example. Those bad actors are quite multiple. In many cases, they have a lot of motivation, a lot of free time, and some are pretty skilled uh, and are able to do a lot of harm, in fact. Mm. Another issue that uh, we should consider here is that we are all Wikimedians. What we do is important. Millions of people come to Wikipedia to make an opinion about something, right? Uh, the thing is that uh, bad actors are very well aware of this fact, and they are often able to invest considerable resources to target those editors who oppose them. Another issue uh, that is worth mentioning in this context is our loved ones. Uh, when we are accessing online spaces, we often think that our activities can affect only ourselves. However, this is not the case entirely. Unfortunately, I have seen many cases where uh, bad actors were targeting pretty severely also the loved ones of the editor they targeted. I've seen, for example, cases of bad actors uh, sending uh, emails to the children of the editor they were targeting or even talking about those children in public spaces online. I have seen cases of bad actors uh, emailing the employer of the targeted editor. So these are the, the, the things that we should uh, keep in mind when editing. Why should we care to, be, to protect our, our safety online? And uh, what can we do in this situation? I remember that at the beginning of COVID pandemic, Many people were asking doctors, like, doctor, what to do? How to best protect from COVID? And doctors at the beginning were saying, like, well, don't get sick. So in this particular case, uh, it is a little bit similar. It is best to just don't get sick and be careful before the event occurs and not after, right? Digital safety is basically about that. When we are talking about digital safety, uh, we should remember that uh, this is a continuous practice. It's not like a goal in itself, something that we want to achieve, but something, uh, some kind of sets of activities and habits that we should develop and, and adapt and, 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 and use them continuously. Uh, digital safety is very much contextual. As uh, someone who is based in Poland, would have to, like me, uh, would have to make, take a very different set of security measures than someone who is based in Iran and, for example, edits topics uh, related to human rights abuses by the Islamic Republic, right? Oh, 
I just accidentally shared an information that, about myself that could be used to harass me, that I'm based in Poland, but I'm sure that in this case it's not harm done because I know that all of you are editors in good standing and besides, I suppose that many of you could have figured out my country of origin from my extremely strong Polish accent, in fact, Polish English that I'm using to speak to you. Uh, uh, it is important to realize that digital safety uh, has a price. Uh, for security, uh, we have to pay with lower usability and functionality in many cases. Uh, we can divide digital safety into three main aspects. One of, each, uh, one of these is uh, about digital tools, those tools that we use to, to help mitigate or avoid threats, such as, you know, uh, VPNs, password managers, secure browsers, and so on. We can talk also about spaces as an aspect. Uh, different platforms that we are using because our digital safety is not just about uh, Wikimedia platforms, but also our social media profiles, how much information we share on our social media profiles, even dating apps in some cases, as well as our devices, right? And perhaps the most important aspect of digital safety are habits. Habits as same as the habits that we have in the physical spaces, right? Like, you know, looking left and right before crossing the street. Um, we sh can and should develop the same kinds of habits when, it when we are exploring uh, online spaces, right? And we can talk about, you know, being cautious about how much information do we reveal about ourselves, uh, having strong passwords, different passwords to each account, right? Uh, thinking carefully before accessing a link, updating our software regularly and so on. So these are those habits. And in my opinion, they are the most important aspect of digital safety. Uh, and the most important part of it is privacy. Privacy is a right. Uh, in many countries, it is a right protected by the law. But regardless of whether uh, it is protected by the law or not, we can ourselves take some measures to protect it. Because we have the right to, to, to privacy and for it to be protected. Mm. Here is something that, um, in my experience, I have seen a lot of. Namely, many, many editors are sharing a lot of information about themselves on Wikipedia. Like, for example, they are using their real, uh, real life uh, names and surnames as their uh, Wikipedia usernames, right? Sometimes they are using just initials or, let's say, first letter of the first name and then surname. And this is something that obviously allows bad actors to find them uh, pretty easily. Mm. Also, uh, another thing is that when they have some different username on Wikipedia, they sometimes use it on other social media platforms, like, I don't know, Reddit uh, or uh, uh, Twitter, right? Uh, so, uh, and on those platforms, uh, uh, there are a lot of more information about themselves, right? Um, another thing is that uh, sometimes in the Discussions, for example, editors like accidentally reveal information about themselves, like, you know, when trying to convince someone about something, about something, they are sharing like the place where they studied or the place where they are employed. Sometimes they are sharing their pictures, right? And these are, uh, I'm sure that there are very good reasons for the community members to be interested in sharing some informations, right? Because we, sometimes we want people uh, to know that we can be trusted, that we have nothing to hide. But it is very important to be cautious about the fact that all of these informations can be very well used by bad actors to do us harm in many different ways, right? Uh, now, uh, I have seen many cases where bad actors were very skilled in finding out who the person is based on just tiny scratches of information that someone accidentally revealed, let's say, in a discussion talk page, uh, in an article talk page, right? So those bad actors are quite skilled and able to use those information, especially if they are affiliated with the state, security services, for example, right? Uh, now, um, I'm actually quite curious about your language projects. Uh, have you ever witnessed a situation when, for example, uh, someone used information provided by another editor in bad faith? I'm not interested in, in details, just generally. It can be something relatively less dangerous, like using slurs based on someone's nationality, but it can be something 
far more dangerous, like uh, get re revealing someone's real life identity, right? So if someone has any examples that they would like to share, please feel invited. Oh, we have a few cases. Yes, yeah, so let's start um, from you. Yeah, uh, apart from the guy that wants me dead for about 50 years, <laughs> um, probably that, that has become an international thing. I mean, yes, the, the, the same user also like spotted um, conversations that were happening on the IRC, which we haven't been using for five or six years. Exactly. Uh, and right now when he vandalizes the request for admins page, for example, he uses little tidbits of those conversations, like me uh, changing another user's nickname to, 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 to sound, mm -hmm. you know, funny and more familiar. Yeah, this so, is... So, uh, yeah, the guy does that, for instance, like taking out tidbits of different stuff that happened even five or six years ago. Mm. Yeah, this is exactly what they do. Like, I'm often very much impressed at, like, how, how much effort they can put, you know, dig through how, 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 how much content, right? Then we have Mikola, right? Yeah, well, I have a pretty similar stupid guy. Mm. Even several, being a cheek user helps to attract those guys. <laughs> it's usually guys, no matter Yeah. Like, uh, the stupidest I have seen was a guy who vandalized an article about university where I studied mm -hmm. by impersonating my IP provider. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah, that's quite impressive yeah. for me, even, <laughs> even though, you know, I've seen a lot of cases. <laughs> yeah, so f thank you for those examples. Uh, I don't know what's your name. Uh, my name is Greta. I'm using yeah, Marta from Albania. So what actually happened to me personally, what I was doing was editing articles that had um, the to be born in Albania, you can say it in different ways, but the standard is the standard. Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. But still, he was using the North dialect to write the article, so hmm. I was kind of right. But his message was like, stop editing my articles because I'm an English te uh, Albanian uh, language teacher and you're just a kid. I was <laughs> a kid back then, <laughs> but I was like, <laughs> so yeah, he just wanted to show me that I know who you are. Yeah, exactly. That. Yeah, you know, uh, this is particularly concerning because I believe that this way, like getting to, the, to your real life identity, yeah. they are sending a message, right? Yeah, exactly, and especially because my username has nothing to do with my name, and mm -hmm. I, there was just one comment in a discussion page that somebody mentioned where I work. So it was really mm. somebody trying to find Yeah. Me. This is a very beautiful, not, not beautiful, of course, but very good example of, of how this works, right? Yeah. That they can, they can use very tiny pieces of information to get who, who we are and try to intimidate us in a way. Thank you for, for, for this example. Thank you all. Yeah, uh, maybe a separate example. Oh, yes, please. Uh, completely different context and in a chapter where like, people are usually under their real names. Mm -hmm. We appointed a woman to uh, one of the positions. And somebody said, oh, but like you studied in this specific school. <laughs> why did you, why could, how could we appoint you after you Jeez. studied in the school? <laughs> Amazing. I mean, yeah. Obviously, she did not mention the school anywhere on her page. Yeah. Jeez. I'm sorry to hear about all of those cases, obviously. I'm sorry because I, I might have developed some kind of professional indifference, but I also feel uh, how, how, how painful it is. Yeah. Well, you know, like uh, you, you mentioned using your real name. I've been doing that as long as I've been editing, basically, and my real name is actually quite rare. Yeah. <laughs> Although I found a person with the same given name and surname in the neighboring city, actually. <laughs> mm. But uh, this is, yes, this is a calculated, th this was a calculated decision. This was a, mm. a, a premeditated decision that I took. What was your motivation for, like, if I can ask? Well, to, to uh, be able to say that I'm recognized for the things that I do, mm. right? This means, of course, that if you are uh, fighting against vandalisms, people will not like you. Yeah. And that they will not like you as a user. No, they will not like you as a person. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, definitely. But basically, my, my decision to go with my real name, apart from the fact that I joined the local chapter later, I was part of the board, 
so this, this information had to be revealed, yeah. was that yes, that I, want, I want recognition for what I do. Right now I take a lot of concert photos, mm -hmm. uh, more than 3,000 in the last year, and I want them to be recognized by my real name as well, even though my Wikimedia story is like 18 years or so. 17 years. Yeah, this is like I would say, of course, I understand this kind of motivation and I guess it is a kind of trade-off, right? We assess the risk, yeah? We assess the risk and benefits, so I can, I can totally understand and thank you all so much for sharing those uh, experiences. I'm always very much interested in, you know, hearing those, those real stories from real people, right? And not just uh, from, from the users whom I don't see. So thank you all, thank you so much. Uh, where were we? Aha, yeah, now someone could ask, uh, like, Okay, so should I not share any kind of information about myself? And the answer to this question is the same as the answer to, I guess, most questions in this world, meaning uh, this depends, right? It depends whether, for example, I'm editing, uh, I'm based in Poland and I'm editing articles about I don't know, Polish lizard, I think we have one species of Polish lizard, right? Or whether I'm based in Iran and I'm editing articles about, you know, uh, human rights abuses by the Islamic Republic. So in that situation, it would be advised to exercise caution in sharing information and especially uh, in being careful about what we are saying in the discussions because as, um, as our colleagues here kindly, kindly explained, even tiny details can be very well used by those bad actors to, 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 to learn who we are, right? Um, also, uh, what I would advise to everyone uh, when we are editing, to make a kind of audit of our online presence, like check how much we can learn, you know, by just googling our name and, and going to the, to the internet, right? Oh, I see Mikola is smiling, so I guess you have some, some story to share about it, but I'm not sure if we have time, I, sh I guess I should, yeah, I should proceed quickly, <laughs> all right, um, so this is this. Mm. Uh, here it is also advised to co compartmentalize our social media platforms. Don't share the links, don't leave links, uh, like sh linking our different social media profiles generally, because those bad, bad actors are exploiting this very well. And practice data minimalization, this is basically what I just said, exercising caution. Uh, now, I talked a lot about safety risks, what they actually are. Uh, pretty much the stuff, the kind of stuff that our colleagues have, have mentioned already, namely uh, doxing, basically revealing information about someone, usually without their consent, private information, and this is dangerous for two reasons. One, because it is pretty much irreversible, meaning uh, internet remembers, right? Uh, even if we take down this information, it is highly likely that someone has already seen it, maybe made a screenshot and might use it later and reveal it again later. And second, doxing might serve as a gate to further harassment, like opening the door to further harassment, making us also more vulnerable to this kind of harassment. I have seen like uh, users issuing really horrible threats to someone's family, for example. And this is the kind of intimidation that not everyone can endure. Um, then I'm talking a lot about harassment. Harassment in, in broad terms we understand as the type of communication that is used to um, upset or intimidate someone. Uh, it can be done through private or public channels and in, in different ways. One of such ways is, for example, hounding, right? Uh, confronting an editor wherever they appear. I have seen a lot of this behavior and it is aimed at like discouraging them from, you know, coming up, coming to Wikipedia and to, it is aimed to make them uh, stop editing. And then we have threats. I'm sure it doesn't need much, much explanation what, what threats mean, right? I just say that they can be made uh, through different channels uh, and sometimes, <laughs> as it is the case with the threats, unfortunately they are followed up with uh, with real action, so uh, uh, particularly uh, dangerous. Oh, what to do? Uh, just as I said, don't get sick, practice caution before, being careful about what kind of information do we share about ourselves, and audit our online presence, what I mentioned, let's see like, how, how much information about ourselves is there, but when the danger already happens. Uh, basically, first, we should just assess the situation, I actually, I think I needed to, to show the presentation, but, um, you know, uh, because it won't be... <laughs> I guess it's between the grid. Uh, okay. 
Sorry for this. Okay. <laughs> I'll try to handle. Mm. All right. Uh, well. <laughs> hmm. Um, okay. I will try to try to try to just talk um, and be extra extra you know uh, informative in a way. Uh, how much time do I have? Because we started in different timelines. About ten minutes, I believe. No, actually. Uh, mm, okay. Uh, but uh, isn't, aren't we having another presentation about AI? No, not at all. Okay, great. Uh, so uh, basically what happens uh, when, when, when the threat finally happens, the, the, the risk finally happens, and we are there already. First, we should assess the situation, try to find out uh, who the editor is, the one who is harassing us, why are they doing this, perhaps, and then uh, we should document uh, uh, this whole thing. As much as, as upsetting as it might be, uh, this is particularly important in case we want to escalate the issue further. I'm saying in case, uh, because when the harassment is severe, we might want to, to contact the law enforcement, but uh, in some cases, it might not be the best course of action for a Wikipedian. Uh, there are certain jurisdictions when it, it, where it can be actually counterproductive, right? Those jurisdictions that make trouble for editing, right? Yes, please, Wojciech. Yeah. Uh, concerning the guy that wants to be dead for yeah. four years, I did report him about eight years ago. I provided all the list of IP addresses which were still on the record for the uh, major IP uh, for, for the major operator in Poland because they had to keep the records for two years. I gave them the contact within uh, the operator that I had from the operator. These direct the law enforcement to us uh, if, if they want to be, they have the questions. So I basically brought everything on the table. They closed down the case for not being able to pinpoint the perpetrator. Oh, my. Uh, well, uh, actually, um I, I'm not. Uh, I'm very much sorry to hear about this, but not entirely surprised because I imagine that this happens, right, in in, in the police in our country. Uh, yeah. This guy became active quite recently, so we thought that we might get a lawyer to do that. And yeah. basically, uh, the lawyer, the, the, the attorney that we hired, who was supposed to be an expert in cyber law and cyber threats, didn't know how to work with Wikipedia. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, like, I, I can find the, uh, the operator, the ISP that this guy is using. No, you don't have to. You've got it here. Mm. Well, it's like he, he, they weren't able to work with the data which is openly accessible from the edit history. <laughs> right. Um. I, I can totally imagine this kind of situation, no, knowing our police, right? So, uh, anyway, this, this option remains, but uh, don't, don't have your hopes too high. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. However, uh, fortunately, there is also another option than just police, because we, the Trust and Safety team, as well as the Human Rights team, are here uh, specifically for you. Our main goal is to protect the communities and support them uh, whenever harm is being done to them. Uh, Oh, five minutes? Yeah. Oh, all right. So uh, whenever uh, you feel that uh, you might be harmed, we are very much grateful. We are very happy uh, uh, to receive your report and act accordingly on it. On it. I'm not sure uh, how much awareness there is in your language communities about trust and safety. Um, we are trying to, to act in order to, to, to spread this awareness. We are here for you. Uh, I guess this is my message. Um, and we are very open to, to any kinds of uh, reports. Mm. Okay, just five minutes, so I will make it quick about uh, some, some simple tips. Right? So uh, everyone knows the importance of password, right? And if someone takes our password, they can do a lot of harm. Lock us out from our account, impersonate us, and so on. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, now uh, let's take a look at these two pass. Ah, Jesus Christ! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. So basically, what I <laughs> yeah, what I wanted to say is that imagine one password that has a lot of different signs and numbers, but it's shorter, and another password that is long but has just letters. Which one of these do you think is stronger? Second one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Second one, and this is because. Even though uh, it is advised to use different signs, 
but uh, ultimately it is the length of password uh, that determines how hard it is to crack, especially by computers, for example. Like brute force, you talked about brute force. Mm -hmm. Whereas, yeah. Uh, unless these are random letters, okay, so yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is, this is uh, I'm talking about uh, like the, the computer capabilities to crack it because uh, like I was going to show the timelines of how long it would take uh, for, for each password to be cracked. Also, it is advised to not make passwords personal, what you mentioned, right? Um, try to, as much as, as tempting as it might be, right? Uh, better not to make them personal. Um, Right, uh, so passphrase is generally better than password. Um, oh, I had another example of phishing here, like you could, you know, imagine a page that looks almost like Wikipedia, but it has certain thing in the URL, but yeah, uh, we, we aren't able to do this, unfortunately. Um, all right, so I will just recommend you using two-factor authentication. This is something uh, that we are using frequently in the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, this is basically an additional layer of protection uh, that uh, after typing password, you need to also type a number code that is generated every few seconds uh, uh, by the two-factor authentication. This is quite useful because if someone even somehow gets our password, they will also have to get through this, which makes for them like taking over our account much more difficult. And I recommend this feature to everyone to better uh, uh, safeguard our, uh, our, our passwords. And then VPNs. We all know what VPN is, right? The service that allows us to access internet through the usage of another computer. We might use VPNs in order to avoid uh, internet service provider, state actor from monitoring uh, our activity, right? Um, but we have to also be careful about VPNs because they are not always uh, to be trusted. I remember, for example, back years ago when I was living in Iran, uh, people were trying to access pages that were blocked there, like Facebook, and were using VPNs. But the point was that VPNs were owned by guys who were affiliated uh, somehow with the establishment and they were making good money on this situation and I'm sure they were even sharing this money with uh, law enforcement. So uh, it, it is also important to assess whether a VPN can be trusted. I see that my time is uh, up. So uh, thank you all so much. It's been a pleasure talking to you and seeing you.